in the memory of late Mrs. Alka Hemant Patil. We are glad to present our audio articles for inspiring disabled persons to achieve greater heights in their career. Under the project of Client Service Department of National Association for the Blind, India, to empower the disabled in tribal, rural and semi-urban areas of our country. Subhash Date Range Assistant Director, NAB Lewis Braille Memorial Research Center Bombay The sighted world is not prepared to accept the blind on equal terms, says Subhash Date Range ruefully. You imagine how frustrating this must be to a young man with initiative, drive and ambition. A man for instance like Subhash himself. He lost the sight of his one eye in early childhood after. Successive operations undertaken to remove the cataract which had developed in both eyes when he was only four months old. A bright youngster coming from a lower middle class family of Ahmednagar, Subhash paid for his entire education with the scholarship C1. He did his BA with economics and politics, and side by side he worked in a bank at Ahmednagar. He came to Bombay for his MA with economics and demography, and to maintain himself he worked as a statistical assistant attached to the Bureau of Economics and demanding no brain power. Statistics, Sachiv Lair With insufficient time for study, he missed getting a class which put paid to his hopes of joining the International Institute of Population Studies, Bombay. Looking around for a job he joined Steel Age as a sales assistant and in 1967 got Mulride. He has a little four-year-old son now. To better his prospects he next joined J. B. Advani and Co. as sales officer in their import-export business. Suddenly, one day in 1973, sitting at his desk, he felt a quick flash and in a split second lost the vision from his remaining eye. An operation at the Sitapur Eye Hospital worked wonders, only, alas, to be followed by a relapse. Four operations later, Subhash realized that he had to face blindness and come to terms with it. Determinedly, he underwent a course in rehabilitation, mobility training, braille and dictaphone typing at the workshop for the blind, Bombay. Then he looked around for a job. This is where he felt so bitter. The only work offered to him was of a manual kind demanding no brain power. What he wanted was a chance to show what he could do. This he got when he came in contact with the National Association for the Blind and secured his present post as Assistant Director of the newly opened Lewis Braille Memorial Research Center. The work is challenging, he has a position of authority and a free hand. But then, Subhash has always obviously then, the majority of being enterprising. Before this he her 9 million blind are to be was the founder member of a found there, where the Hydra Consumer Society in the colony of malnutrition raises its ugly where he stays Nehru Nagar heads. A minute percentage of at Kurla. He was also on the these find the means to migrate managing committee of the to the cities to gain education tenants association there and or employment and make some organize a sports club for the residents. He is a voracious reader, main behind. Fond of light western music all the more credit therefore with an absolute passion listening to BBC broadcasts and his limited circumstances and when one of them rises above he loves meeting people. Tall broad-shouldered, soft-spoken, here is a man who is sure to go places. We need many more like him. When he was a assistant director of NAB Lewis Braille Memorial Research Center, LBMRC, he undertook a lot of research projects under his leadership. The most prominent was to common Braille course for Indian languages. Those days different institute working for the blind in different states in our country were using different braille cores in writing, reading and printing braille books in local languages. The similar case was with the use of mathematical braille cores too. Mr. Daytrange collected them all and developed common braille cores for Bharti Braille. He had successfully implemented it throughout our country and abroad. They also helped in printing Braille material in international languages. 
He had printed a lot of books in Braille and ink print and distributed them throughout the country and international level. He had a keen interest in developing aids and appliances for the blind for which he established a workshop to develop them. He had taken up a project of developing Sathi White Cane on behalf of Government of India. He developed books on directory of aids and appliances available for the blind. He also established a NAB Amerson's Museum of the Aids and Appliances for the Blind at NAB Cotton Green Complex. In future he became a executive director of NAB India. During his tenure he worked on blind persons with low vision in order to prevent blindness and to provide low vision aids to the blind. He established a clinical center in the premises of NAB workshop for the blind which helped thousands of blind persons and persons with low vision. He also printed large print books for the persons with low vision. He organized a national seminar on the topic of low vision in Mumbai, which was successful to fetch attention of active agencies in promoting the cause. Mr. Daytrange had taken active part during International Decade for the Disabled, that is 1981 to 1991. During those days he published a lot of books to promote socio-economic rehabilitation of the disabled in India. He was able to convince the government of India to act on the policies of UNO for promoting the work for the disabled in our country and to plan a strategy for it. The LBMRC have established a library at NAB Verli Seafase Complex. In the library there were thousands of books were available on the topic of promoting disabled welfare and establishing educational, development and rehabilitational services for the welfare of the blind persons. The collection of the books had written by famous authors throughout the world. The books helped a lot of professionals, officials and volunteers associated with NAB India to promote blind welfare. Mr. Daytrange had also successfully organized a national seminar on the topic of role of science and technology for promoting the disabled in Mumbai successfully. He was Honorary Secretary of Blind Persons Association, Mumbai, which helped the needy and poor blind. Majority of them were blind hawkers. In order to have them better living he was able to convince German Miserer Agency to provide donations for repairing of the huntsmen. This scheme helped hundreds of blind persons residing at slum areas of Mumbai. Lakshman Bhau Hote Mechanic and Machine Spare Parts Dealer Pona India lives in her villages. Obviously then, the majority of her 9 million blind are to be found there, where the hydra of malnutrition raises its ugly heads. A minute percentage of these find the means to migrate to the cities to gain education or employment and make some things worthwhile out of their lives, but the vast majority remain behind. Now, in his father's field, there was a Kiloskar all-engine pump set. In 1958, when Lakshman was only about 12 years old, this set went out of order and needed urgent repairs. The village mechanic was called for, after three days of waiting, in but kept postponing his visit. Exasperation, Lakshman's brother bought a manual and tried to repair it himself. Ultimately, Lakshman, after having the manual read out to him, found the fault in the fuel injection nozzle and put it right. This was a revelation to him. It gave him courage and confidence. For the next 12 years he went from farmer to farmer trying to get acquainted with the engines and their problems. Nearby farmers also came to him to get their engines repaired, and in all he repaired 200 machines. Hearing of this, Mr. S. L. Kirloskar, chairman of Kirloskar All Engines Limited, Pune organized a small function on his behalf and presented him with a purse of Rs 501 and a tool set. With this aid he started his own small workshop and began dealing in Kirloskar all engine spare parts and materials supplied to him on credit by Mr. Kirloskar. Since 1971 his repair and maintenance shop is catering to the needs of the farmers in and around his village. Today he is a happy man comfortably settled with his small family wife, son and daughter. Well done Lakshman. This is something Bombay. Indeed to be proud of, 
a bright example of the utmost significance and value in the predominantly agricultural land that is India. Ravindra Jain Film Music Director Bombay The bright neon lights on the marquee spell out the name Ravindra Jain. A surefire draw with cinema audiences all over India, to whom music is a greater attraction than even a top-flight star cast. Almost half a dozen films now showing feature his music, and half a dozen others are awaiting release. Blessed with an inherent musical talent, Ravinder early showed his genius. He started taking music lessons at a very early age and even composed poems and songs when he was just a boy. He grew to develop a particular fondness for Hindi, Urdu and Bengali literature. He became a Sangeet Prabhakar from the Prayag Sangeet Samiti of Allahabad and for 10 music in several institutions of years he was an instructor of Calcutta, like the Balika Vidya Bhavan and the Jain Swatember Vidyalaya. He made frequent public appearances on stage and was also having made quite a reputation recording with HMV for himself in Bengal, he then idea of launching himself in the came over to Bombay with the film world. In 1971 he did a song for producer N. N. Sippy which led to many contracts, the first being for Rajashri Productines Saudagar. By now he has many hits to his credit which include Chol Machai Shor, Do Jasus, Geet Gata Chalwaist Fakira, Mahabad Mash, Zid, Sarkari Mehman, Rai Sada and Divangi are ready for release. Ravinder likes to introduce and encourage new voices and this he has done with resounding success in Geet Gatachal. It is no easy task to break into the fiercely competitive world of the Indian cinema with its intrigues and rivalries. Ravinder could do it through hard work, technical excellence and of course the necessary pull, without which it seems nobody gets on these days. But the talent must be there, the urge to do well and the effort put in is the deciding factor. Remember, says Ravindra what the poet tells us, and he recites, in his very soft low voice. The heights by great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight. But they while their companions slept were toiling upwards in the difficulties of course there were night. No doubt, but that is all in the game, says Ravindra refusing to dwell on them. He acquired his handicap right from the time of his birth in 1944, though he still has some slight vision in one eve. This has made him particularly sensitive to the problems of other, and he has staged several charity shows all over India, to help those in need. Tales Park, news has just come in that Geet Gatachal wins the prestigious 1975 Sur Singar Sansat Film Music Award, and the Swami Haridas Award for the Best Music Dire Toe goes to Ravindra Jain for high music in that film. He employed a lot of musical instrument player blind artists in his team which attracted other musicians to employ the blind. Mr. Jain has launched the first Indian ladies' braille watch for the blind developed by Hindustan Machines and Tools Limited as per the project of NAP Client Service Department under the leadership of Mr. Hemant Patil. Shail Kumar Jain Physiotherapist Bombay No one knows better than Shail Kumar Jain that persistent space. He believes in going after a thing until he gets it. For Insta on account of his blindness, unfairly debarred, solely holding the post of an instructor in cane work in a government institution of Haryana, he did not rest till he secured it through the good offices of the then Chief Minister, Pratap Singh Keru. Having proved his point, he declined the post. Again, studying at the Sonepat Hindu College in 1964 he left halfway, his imagination fired by an article on physiotherapy written by a blind Japanese lady. Shail Kumar travelled to Calcutta, Madras and Bombay this line. To see what scope there was in. Victoria Memorial School for in Bombay, he joined the blind and learned physiotherapy continuing as a special case, on a central government scholarship which had been awarded to him when he had earlier joined Punjab University. He started practicing as physiotherapist in 1966. The beginning was disheartening in the extreme but slowly he built up a clientele and today he has no lack of patients who pay him handsomely.
Physiotherapy can be a very paying profession for the blind, says Shail Kumar, provided one is prepared to go without work for the first two or three years. Of course, there must also be inherent skill and the ability to win the patient's confidence. Initially, Shail Kumar approached several well known physicians and practicing physiotherapists and learnt much from them. Thereafter, he kept track of all the latest developments. At present, he is very much interested in Syatsu physiotherapy, a form of reflex therapy where, by means of digital pressure on various parts of the body, it is possible to diagnose the patient's illness. Shail Kumar declares that he has himself experienced this. He is keen on going to Japan, Germany and Switzerland to observe latest techniques and this independent young man is bent on paying his own way. Born in 1941 in Sonepat, Haryana, he lost his sight when he was a year old. He started his education at the Government Institute for the Blind, Panipat, where he became expert in cane work, winning the first prize in an All India competition in the Baskety section in 1960. He can make beautiful cane furniture and he is a good weaver too. Back home he used to execute orders, sitting up late into the night. Side by side with physiotherapy, Shail Kumar has kept up with his education. He took his BA as well as his MA degrees from Elphinstone College. Very recently he crossed his latest hurdle. After five months of frantic effort he has now been allowed to appear for his PhD after convincing the authorities concerned that his blindness would not be an impediment. His thesis in Hindi is on Bhartendu Harishchand, a revolutionary of 1857, who worked for the spread of Hindi literature and preached freedom through his writings. If Shail Kumar continues to charter his future course with the same single-mindedness and determination he has shown so far, he is bound to do well. Mahabir Prasad Jati Industrialist Calcutta Born in the lap of luxury, surrounded by wealth. And yet all the money in the world could not restore the sight of Mahabir Prasad Jati, who lost his vision 15 days after his birth due to corneal opacity. His rich and influential grandfather, Sir Okar Jati, O.B.E. sought the best of treatment abroad, in England and in Europe, but to no avail. Realizing that nothing more could be done for him, a governess was engaged and Mahabir was educated privately at home, though he did attend the Calcutta School for the Blind for some time. The family owned tea gardens, jute mills and paper plants in West Bengal, and as young Mahabir grew up he began taking an increasing interest in business matters. He had a keen, penetrating mind and considerable business acumen, which he put to good use. Today he is actively involved in managing the business, making policy decisions, and implementing them. He helped to float the Union Paper and Board Mills Limited, Calcutta, and through sheer dint of merit and hard work, he was elected by the shareholders as their managing director. He has also chaired the Calcutta Flour Mills Association for three consecutive years. Since the last 10 years, Mahabir has been taking a prominent part in welfare work for the blind. He is the founder secretary of the National Association for the Blind, West Bengal State Branch, of which he is still the honorary general secretary. On behalf of the association, he has organized a good many ICAMs, opened a recreation center, and started an employment and placement service for the blind in that state. How deeply he is committed to social welfare may be gauged from the fact that he is a member of 25 such bodies throughout the country. He is the president of the Lions Club of Calcutta and a past Rotarian. He is widely traveled, having visited Europe twice and the States once for business education and eye treatment. He knows five languages and can read and write braille fluently. He is also an extremely good chess player. At 56, Mahabir Jatia has made his mark as an industrialist, a worthy successor to his father and grandfather. He is happily married and has several children and grandchildren. The family owns a five-acre estate on the banks of the Ganges, with a large bungalow which boasts, among other things, 
a fabulous and unique collection of clocks, glass furniture, and other costly and rare objects. Hemant J. Patil Honorary Secretary National Association for the Blind, India